Righteousness, peace, and joy. As our partner, we welcome you to today's broadcast and for taking the message of grace around the world through your support. Thanks for making a difference in the world today. Righteousness, peace, war, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Everybody sing righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Oh, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part? Oh, don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on, come on everybody Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Oh, don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on everybody We glorify the name of God for this special opportunity we have to be blessed this evening again. This is your favorite program, Kingdom Life Half Hour, coming to you from your inspirational station. Echo 89.7 FM. This program comes up from 8.05 to 8.35 every Sunday evening and is brought to you by Praise Arena. Praise Arena is Kingdom Light Christian Center with a worship place at Lekki, that's VGC, Lekki, Lagos. The exact location for worship is within Lori Hotel, Grace Hall, Lori Hotel, VGC, Lekki, Lori Hotel is immediately after Nikon Hotel, just a stone throw from VGC bus stop before you get to Aja in Lekki. So we'll be looking towards having you worshipping with us any of these days. And great will be your testimony in Jesus' name. So once again, you are welcome to the program tonight. I'm Jumi Adito Yeshe Lagunju. The Lord has been using this program to bless millions of people. One thing I want to assure you tonight is this. Your tuning in tonight is not by accident. Whether you are a Muslim, you are a Christian, whatever may be your faith, I want to assure you of something. God has you in mind. Irrespective of what you are going through, are you going through any challenging situation? Are you feeling so dejected, discouraged because of the economic situation or for earth reason you are having some issues, some challenges? The Lord is saying, I created you. That's our Heavenly Father. I created you and I have you in mind. And from this moment, your situation is turning around and you will turn back to say, Father, I thank you because you are coming out of that situation and your joy will be full in Jesus' name. So my brother, my sister out there, I congratulate you for being part of this program tonight. As I said earlier on, I'm Jumi Adito Yesho Lagunju. Uh, you know one thing I always tell people? If only we realize that the situation we are going through now will come to pass. If only we realize that, we will not allow the current situation to weigh us down. You just look towards that end. At the end of the tunnel, there's that light. And that's what the Lord is assuring you of. So, are you ready to cheer up? That's wonderful. God bless you. God bless you. So, as you are looking the direction of this voice, whatever may be your situation, the name of Jesus Christ, if it has to do with earth, and you are wondering, my earth is deteriorating. Despite the fact that the doctor told me I will be recovering, I will improve, things are not getting better. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare total healing into that your situation in Jesus' name. That tumor that is said to be growing, developing in your brain, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the laser from above to burn off that unwanted growth and for you to be totally healed in Jesus' name. I declare no mercy into that nervous system, the nervous brain breakdown that the doctor come up with in their result concerning you and you'll be able to control every part of your body in a normal way in Jesus name and for you individual out there you are afraid to go for a test because the doctor said they need to subject you to another test to go for a blood
blood test. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare total healing into your blood system in Jesus' name. Everything that has to do with case of cancer or whatever, the unusual development in your blood, I declare total healing in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for that you've done. And this individual, you are looking in the direction of this voice. You are expecting your situation to be mentioned. The Lord is saying, I have you in mind. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever you are believing God for, in Jesus' name, I declare total solution into your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for that you've done. For in Jesus Christ's name, I've prayed. Amen. Amen. So, my brothers, my sister, once again, I say congratulations. In the last few series, we have been focusing on so many things that has to do with what God says concerning you, what God says concerning me, and fulfilling all the purpose he has for me, what the Lord has for you, and being able to operate in the fullness of that joy that our Heavenly Father has guaranteed through our Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, we want to look at this special message. And this message is focusing on family. And you know why I say family? It's not just for daddy or mommy alone when you say uh, for Father's Day celebration or Mother's Day celebration. It has to do with the entire family. But before I go ahead, let me use this moment to say Happy Father's Day. For as many people out there, fathers to be fathers already, and even the children, the young man that is just going there, I say Happy Father's Day. And for the woman out there, you are wondering how come you are not greeting us. Okay, we have greeted you a few days ago, but I still say Happy Mother's Day as well. You know, the essence is not just about the gender. It's about you as individual being celebrated. So whether it's the Mother's Day or the Father's Day, you are appreciated as parents and parents to be. And so that's why tonight I want to look at something. How Heavenly Father presented this to the children of Israel. And now they carry it from there, even to where we are today. Some might be telling us and be saying, you see all this Father's Day celebration as a paganistic origin, as this, as that one. But the issue is this. What does the scripture say about appreciating our parents, about celebrating one another? And that's the area we'd rather focus on. Because the first Father's Day was celebrated in Spokane, Washington on June 19, 19, 1910. Father's Day has become increasingly popular all through the entire Western world, and it has come to all this part of the world. It's a kind of celebration in line with the Mother's Day, which is also celebrated all over the world. So it's a part, a way to appreciate the fathers as well. Although some suggested that uh, it dated back to the celebration of something, June solstice, in the celebration of the, of the sun and the things like that. But the issue is not about the argument of the origin. It's about what is it pointing to that we are looking at today. So irrespective of the views that may be expressed from some quarters, the key message tonight is on the instruction from God as contained in the scripture with a promise of reward of obedience. So when we say, honor your father and your mother, and some people see it as in, it's an option. No, I have only father said, look, I gave you this instruction. Because in the later day, you will look back and say, Father, I thank you. I'm living longer now. I'm in good health. I'm in good condition. I'm doing well in life. How did I get here? And God will point you and I to say, look, I gave you this simple instruction at that time. That when you honor your father, when you honor your mother, it will be well with you and you live long on earth. It will be well with you in every area of your life and you will live long. That's longevity as contained in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 16. So, to the extent that some people now say, wow, if this is this good, we will hear mark a whole week for celebration of parents. And the honor is not just to respect alone. Of course, from the scriptural language, the word honor used here goes beyond just the ob obedience. Once a child is above 18, the honor used for the children in the land of Israel means not only are you to respect them, you are to provide something for them physically, as in support, either monetary, the food, or they'll take care of them. God says when you take care of your elderly ones, then you will live long and it will be well with you. Wow, what a great thing. That means if I take care of my mom, take care of my dad, take care of the people that are of that figure in my life, God says I will reward you in return. I've got nothing to lose. And when you are doing it, you have greater joy within yourself. So my brother, my sister out there, you might be saying, but I don't have a dad, I don't have a mom. Probably you have some people that have that figure in your life, that father's rule, mother's figure, father's figure in your life, 
take care of them. And you see, it's a great investment. You see how our Heavenly Father will bless you in return in a special way. You might be saying, but that was in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 16. Our Lord Jesus Christ also retreated it in the book of Matthew chapter 15. From verse 3 to 6, where he came to correct the people without missing words. He said, look, you Pharisees, teachers of old, you made these children not to be taken care of their parents again, based on your tradition, by telling them that the money you're supposed to have given your parents, the item you're supposed to have given your parents, bring it to the temple. When you bring it, then just declare Coban. This is a gift meant for God. Then God will accept it from you. You don't need to worry yourself. Because they noticed the children were focusing more on giving to their parents as against coming to give them to the priest. So our Lord Jesus said, you made the commandment of God of no effect through your tradition. And that was how our Lord Jesus corrected them sharply. And from that moment, people started going back to the tradition of taking care, obeying the word of God and following the instruction as contained in the scripture. So my dear brothers, my dear sisters out there, you do not have any excuse of not taking care of your parents. Probably you are saying, hey, they offended me, they, they neglected me, they didn't take care of me when I was younger. My dad even left and eloped with another woman, left me with my mom. It's my mommy that take care of me. Now you want me to celebrate my dad? My dear brothers, my dear sisters out there, the Lord is saying, irrespective of what your parents had done, what your father did to you, God is saying, take care of them. Love them in obedience to me, God, I, the creator, that I created you and your parent, in obedience to my word, take care of them and see the way I will honor you, the way I will make you succeed and the way you will live long. So my brothers, my sister out there, irrespective of what your parent might have done to you, the Lord is reminding you, it's reminding everyone tonight, take care of them. When you do it, celebrate them. Honor them. When you do it, you will see how things will turn around in your life. Maybe this is the key to unlock all the challenging situations you have been going through. And by the time we come back after this break, we want to look at how about people that have challenges of how do I now go back to celebrate somebody that never even took care of me? Or probably you are looking at a case of we don't even know where the dad is. I will be back shortly after this message. <laughs> Do you have challenges in your marriage? Is the future looking bleak as against what you had in mind before you got married? Are you concerned about your children and their future? Join us on Sunday by 9 a.m. at Praise Arena as we use practical application of Bible principles to turn every challenging situation to testimony. Venue, Praise Arena, Kingdom Light Christian Center, The Real Hotel, VGC, Lekki, Lagos. You are a living proof that's a miracle is real. You are welcome back. As I said earlier on, God does not leave any room for excuse. Excuse of offenses, of wrongdoings of the past by your parents uh, for not taking care of you and because of that you are not ready to take care of them now, you are not ready to honor them. God is saying, irrespective of what they might have done to you, as long as they gave birth to you, even if they abandoned you from that stage, but now you have known them to be your parent, the Lord is saying, take care of them. Honor them. By so doing, in every area of your life, you will do well. That's what this promise says. It's the first commandment with a promise attached to it, that you will do well in life and you will live long. That's longevity. So that is one area I want to believe tonight. You are turning around to say, I've forgiven them. I will take care of them and see what the Lord will do for you in return in Jesus' name. Before I go to the next point, which has to do with something similar to this, in the area of some children that have been affected, affected by the issue of their parent walking away from home, or their parent abandoning their, their mom, or probably the parents are not even there at all. They are in the house. They are not taking good care of them. I will be back to that in that area to address it. But before we go ahead, this is a message for parents. As fathers, God expect every dad to be the priest in the house, providing spiritual guidance and direction to the family, teaching the children godly values by demonstrating it and reinforcing it continually. And that is what the Lord is telling you and I. Most of the time, people focus on financially, I take care of the need of the family, and that's where it ends for some parents, for some dad. But what the Lord is reminding you of tonight is this. You are the priest in the house. You need to repeatedly be telling those children, as a child of God, you are not supposed to do this, you are not supposed to do that. Just telling them in a communication every day, retreating and 
demonstrating those godly values. By the time you are telling the children, the children are looking up to you as a priest in the house. And as you keep on telling them, it may sound as if I just repeated thing, I mean, I'm just repeating this every time. No, it's making the necessary impact in their life. You know, the scripture says in the book of Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Amazing. That's Proverbs chapter 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Let me explain that one quickly. In the land of Israel, the inheritance a father or a parent focuses on to leave the children is not the building houses or living landed properties and saying the children will inherit it. No, they have the concrete inheritance they live. I know how it goes. First, as those children are grown up, they teach them the godly values, demonstrating it to the children. What it takes to be a responsible adult in honesty, in kindness, how they run away from wickedness, every act that will bring the name of God in their life to the mud, that will drag it to the mud, they make sure they teach those children the godly values. Apart from that, and that's what they retreat every day. By the time they, are, they end the, the, their dinner after 6 p.m., they start teaching the godly value. Then on the Sabbath day, they make sure that they retreat all this and the mother will follow up again with the, those children, how it applies to every area of life. Then the other part expected of the parent, of the dad, is to pray for the child every day. They are expected to bless the child. In fact, by the end of the day, on a Friday preceding the Sabbath day, the daddy had to do a special prayer for the children, telling the child, it shall be well with you. You will succeed in life. And pronouncing the blessing on the child, apart from the daily one that they pronounce. Now, the issue is there, but if a child commits an offense and the daddy has not forgiven the child, for the average person in the land of Israel, they hold on tenaciously to what the scripture says. You should not allow the anger, the offense, of your fellow man being to linger overnight beyond 6 p.m. So that means every parent supposed to have even forgiven, talk less of now aborting it, allowing it to hinder him, prevent him from blessing the child. So as parents out there, the Lord is saying, bless those children every day. Declare that word of blessing into their life. And apart from that, that's part of inheritance. Apart from that, those children are made to undergo secular training, either in the former education or they learn a trade. By the time a child is equipped with something they can work with for life, it has not ended there. Inheritance has not ended there. They now guide the child to get married. They are the one that will marry out the child. After guiding the child on how to get married, and they have equipped the child on how to be a good husband, how to be a good wife, by the time the child has gotten married, the parent will say, yes, we have done our best for you. They will not be at a very good distance just watching and providing guidance in case they need help later. That is what is referred to as inheritance, leaving inheritance for his children's children. Can you now agree with me why it is said that more than 80% of the average youth in the land of Israel succeed in life? In fact, statistics says more than 90%. That nearly everybody succeed in life. One, they take them through the moral values. They take them through the vocational training or their former education. They guide them on how to have a good wife, a good husband, and how to be a responsible family man. And after marrying them out, they are settled. The challenges that drop people down have been overcome through the parent. So the Lord is telling you and I from tonight, take a leave, borrow a leave from the scripture. Being a responsible dad, a responsible mom taking care of those children and connecting them to God, the godly values, teaching them. You'll be surprised. You don't need to be casting out demon, devil, holding back the children when you put them on the right path because you have already equipped them to have victory over principalities and power. That is what the scripture says. So that's the word for the fathers out there. And I want to believe for you out there, the dad and the mom, that Lord will uphold you. If you are believing God for provision, you are being weighed down by the economy situation in the name of Jesus Christ, as you have made up your mind to take care of these children in the way of the Lord, the Lord will open the windows of heaven for blessings to be abundant in your life in Jesus' name. Do I hear amen from you in Jesus' name? Amen. I'm so happy for that. You have connected to it. That's why I said at the beginning of this program, your tuning to this program tonight is not by accident. The Lord has ordained it and testimony will abound in your life in Jesus' name. Probably you are wondering which church is this. This is from Praise Arena.
Ghana, Lori Hotel, VGC, Lake Lagos. That is where our church is situated. And by the time we are rounding off this program, we provide details about our address and other programs. Now, the other message I have tonight, the point I have tonight before we round off, is on the reminder for everyone of the word that Lord has said concerning you. Your case may be the case of a child that you are feeling so low. You are feeling so dejected because of a runaway father. Or the role of the responsibility of the father was carried out solely by the mother. And you are now feeling left out. You know, when uh, today in the church, when everybody was saying, uh, Happy Father's Day, some children felt so low. But thank God we were able to cover it in a message by encouraging them. And that's what the Lord is telling you tonight. That irrespective of what you have experienced in the past, and you are feeling like, where's my dad? Where's my mom? God is saying, you have an inheritance. You have a father. And you have the nature of God in you. You are destined to succeed. And this normally happens where a mother raises a child alone. And this is a message for you out there. The single mother, the single parents. Do not speak bad about your ex-husband or about the father of those children when you are talking to those children. Do not speak bad about their father. Remember one thing. There's nothing that went wrong between those children and their dad when they were younger. It is the relationship between you, the wife, and the man that went a wire, that was trained, that resulted in what really happened. So what the Lord is saying this, and I'm taking a cue, I'm taking this lesson, this teaching from the scripture. In the land of Israel, it has been proven that when a child is grown up and is being raised by a single parent, by the mother, when you keep on mentioning the negative thing that the father had done, and you keep on mentioning it and using it to abuse the children, let me begin to use this word. You know, people will be using this negative word. Look at you. Uh, your, your useless father did this to me. By the time you keep on telling a child, your useless father, at the age, study has shown that at the age that father started doing those negative things, those children will replicate it. So the advice psychologically, apart from what I've just mentioned in the scripture now, the advice is never say negative thing against the ex-husband or against the father that run away. Create the picture of hero in that child. Create the picture of a great man in that child, for that child. One day that child will go past that age based on the godly value you are teaching the child and the child will turn out to be a responsible father in his own life. The problem in your marriage is not between the children and their dad. It is the relationship you have with their dad that was trained. Celebrate the father figure in those children. Present their father as a brave man. Brave man. Do not address the man as a failure. Otherwise, it will become a precursor to creating similar traits in these children. A typical example is the former president of America. All that happened to come from Africa. And history added that the father uh, left those children when they were younger and not being taken care of them in a responsible way as expected. And by the time the mother raised the child alone, the mother knew and understood this. He was always talking great about the dad. Oh, your dad is an African man, a great man, a brave man, without touching on the negative things the man did. And the child grew up with that consciousness. One day I will see that my great dad. And he started growing up with that hero in himself. The great dad celebrating the dad. Happy Father's Day every day in his mind. He said in his book that one day by the time he visited Kenya and he saw the man, he was disappointed. That this is the man they have presented as a hero, as a brave man. But thank God the damage was not done. At that time when he would have caused the damage. What are we saying? Obama ended up recording this and saying he thanked God for the mom and the grandmom that gave him the picture of a hero, of a father that needs to be celebrated. He himself became a responsible man, a very hero, a great hero for the whole world. And the Lord is telling you and I today, retrace your step. If there's anything your husband did and you are beginning to take the tolls on those children, do not pass the buck. Praise that man and say, you have a great dad. You are doing it not because you are exonerating the man. You are building the hero, the giant in the child. And great will continue to be your testimony in Jesus' name. What are we saying next is, every father needs to be celebrated. Whether the runaway father or the one that is in the house, let the children realize the importance of this. And as you are doing so, great will continue to be your own testimony in Jesus' name. My dear brothers, my dear sisters out there, God loves you. God cares for you. We appreciate having you on this program 
every Sunday evening by 8.05. You can link us through our website, praisearena.org, or through our producer, Taiwo Omoshile, Eko 89.7 FM, Lati Jakonde Road, Agidingbe, Ikeja. Our email address is kingdomlifefamily at yahoo.com. You can also call us on our telephone line, 0909-328-9075 or 0807-654-5555. 0807-654-5555. So now Joseph has been a sound engineer on this program. Stay blessed. As we always say on this program, let others see Christ in you. Obedience to the law of the land is obedience to the word of God. The law abiding citizen. Obey the speed limit. It could save somebody's life, even your own life. And please fasten your seatbelt when you are driving. If you are riding on a bike, wear crash airmen. God cares for your life and he has said no evil thing will be for you. But let's also obey the basic safety rule. And great will be your testimony in Jesus' name. I'm Jumi Adeto Esho Lagunju. Be part of this program next week Sunday by 8.05. Remain blessed. Please join us at our entrepreneurial service from 9 to 9.45 every Sunday morning to gain better understanding of kingdom principle for success and connect to divine inspiration for greatness in every area of your life. Venue, Praise Arena, Kingdom Large Christian Center, L'Oreal Hotel, VGC, Lekki, Lagos. As a covenant child, you are destined to succeed. Thank you for being a part of our broadcast. You can visit our website www.praisearena.org to listen to this message and many more. We are believing God for your blessings and for you to partner with us for continuity of this program with other outreaches we are involved in. You can write checks in favor of Kingdom Light Christian Center. Please visit our website for our bank account details for online donation. Thank you for your financial support. Thanks for making a difference in the world today. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Everybody sing righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Oh, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part? Oh, don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on, come on, everybody. Don't you want to be a part? Oh, don't you want to be a part? 